everyone and welcome back to Mariana Mass Books. My name is Mariana and I am here for the first time in a month. So you saw the title and the thumbnail. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure what the thumbnail is going to be yet, but you saw from the title that I had COVID. I will quickly update you guys. Uh, okay, so this is a video that has no plans. Uh, it's probably going to be all over the place. I just want to do like a general update on my reading situation <laughs> um, since COVID and life. Uh, okay, so quick summary. I went on a trip for the first time since the pandemic started. First time in years getting on a plane and everything and day one I got COVID. So it wasn't the best experience. I was, I had to postpone my journey back home. So I had to stay where I was um, until I could travel again. And then I finally came home and um, I've been tired, <laughs> tired and I get winded a lot when I talk. So that's why I hadn't filmed. So I don't want to talk about COVID anymore. Just COVID brought with it a lot of anxiety. So I haven't been in the best place mental health wise um so uh to 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 go to turn this into a natural reading update i have been in you know my reading has always been escapist i've always said so but in this past month my reading was literally escapist meaning I was literally reading because I did not want to be in my real life. So I would pick up a book to literally escape from my real life. Just like too much anxiety, too much things going on. So pick up a book to ignore reality, literally escapist. So I have been reading mostly fiction. Um, you guys know that I am co-hosting Historathon, which is the readathon to read non-fiction history. Um, I have to be honest with you guys, the Historathon reading kind of took a step back this month. I couldn't finish the books I was in the middle of, but I also didn't do a wrap up because I didn't end up finishing most of the books I was reading because I got COVID and I just needed to escape reality, even historical reality, which usually reading history is pretty escapist for me because I like reading ancient periods of time. I don't like reading uh, recent history because it's not escapist. Um, <laughs> but even that was not escapist enough. So. Um, just like as a general context, I told you this video was not going to have like um, all over the place, okay? So I'm just going to roll with it. Uh, I haven't filmed in a month, so I kind of lost my momentum and my filming. Um, anyway, back to the reading. To put you in context, um, you know that I love reading speculative fiction. Just in general, anything that I read, I like it to have a speculative element. And I always say that one of my favorite things is fantasy. And one day I will make a video. Maybe I always say I'll make videos and then I don't make them. But maybe someday I will make a video about why I haven't read a lot of fantasy in my life when I call myself a fantasy reader or, or like a lover of fantasy um, and it has to do with uh, how different reading is here in Mexico you know just culturally how different it is to go to a bookstore um, 
I kind of want to do a video about that. Because all of the things that you guys see me reading, speculative, romance, even the non-fiction that I read nowadays, is directly a uh, booktube influence. Before booktube, uh, my reading was very different. I feel like since booktube, I actually read the things I like to read because now I have been made aware of them. But maybe someday I'll make a video about that. But all that to say that uh, a couple of years ago, I reread the Lord of the Rings, I body read them with L from L Things. I've talked about this before. I got the, the, the I mean, the Tolkien book, but also the fantasy book back. And so last year we started the Realm of the Underlings, which is a 16, 16 long book series um, divided into several trilogies. So we read the first trilogy last year and I just, Again, I got beaten with the fancy book again. And so when 2023 started, I decided that this was going to be my year of fantasy. During COVID and this past month and the anxiety and everything, and me wanting to be very escapist with my reading, I just kept reading fantasy. Oh, because also we finished, uh, Elle and I, we finished the Life Ship Traders trilogy in April, which is the second trilogy in the realm of the other things. And I am just, Robin Cobb is everything to me now. Robin Cobb is the author of the realm of the other things. She is everything. She is, as everyone says, the queen. Um, I am just head over heels in love and I just want to read fantasy all the time. So uh, in terms of like an update, I guess, I have a lot of uh, fantasy reading plans and um, other than, okay. Let me breathe because I am actually getting tired. Um, hold on. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. Uh, 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 okay, so update, I guess. Plans. Yes. Let's give a little bit of structure to this video. Plans. Future reading plans. Um, what are my reading plans for 2023 going forward? I mean, we are in April, so like this could change. But at the moment, this is what I think are my plans. So firstly, Historathon, because, yes. So Historathon, I will continue to do that. I'm going to do more Historathon videos. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do like a TBR for the second quarter and stuff, because I am really honestly like coming out of COVID. I haven't gone back completely to normal in my life. I don't feel normal yet, so. I don't know if I'm going to do a TBR yet. Uh, I think at least for the coming months, I am going to be focusing on audio for Historathon. And then outside of Historathon, at the moment, I'm very much in the mood to read fantasy. So I have a lot of fantasy projects and plans. Who knows how many of them will come to fruition but I have like my notes of like videos I want to do. You'll see whenever, if ever I upload those videos. I, yeah. So um, I'm just going to do a quick update of what did I read during COVID. And um, I mean, after the real bad, the, the first COVID week I didn't read anything because I just wanted to rip my head out from the headache and the eye ache. Um, so I didn't read anything. The three weeks after the, the bad week, what did I read? I'm going to just like wrap up the two books that I read those weeks and I'm going to tell you what I'm currently reading and that's going to be that for this video. Yes, so the two books that I finished while after the bad COVID week were Ship of Destiny by Robin Hobb um, and The Lies of Loch Lamora by um, Scott Lynch. Both fantasy books. 
I don't feel like thinking. So I'm just going to read you my Goodreads reviews. I, I don't even know why I'm making a fuss about reading the Ship of Destiny review because I know it by heart. I could just recite it uh, and it's super easy. So my, my Ship of Destiny review is just the following, all caps. It says five million billion trazillion gazillion stars. I am probably going to make a video about Ship of Destiny. Um, so I won't expand, but just like five million billion trazillion gazillion badabastillion to the infinite and beyond stars. Life Ship Traders trilogy is perfect. Robin Hobb, like I, I already bent the knee to her. I, I'm, I'm loyal to her to the end. I'll just say, if you like slow-paced, character-driven fantasy with excellent themes and an excellent grasp of human nature, just like Robin Hobb, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, and then The Lies of Loc Lamora, I'm going to read it. I get this one four stars. And it says, this was so fun, <laughs> which it was. Um, there was a shift in the character dynamic from around 60 to 80% of the book that lost me for a bit. Luckily, it quickly sorts itself out and reverts back to the fun dynamic I fell in love with since the beginning. So in the beginning, um, you can ask my mom. I was like, this is so good, Scott Lynch is so good, the prose is so scrumptious, the characters are so good, I love Loc Lamora. And then by like 60% of the book, something happened and the tone changes and um, the essence of the book, the soul of the book completely turns on its head and I was like, ah, I don't know, I have to say this. I had just finished Ship, to Ship of Destiny, so I think that could also have an impact in my, uh, in, in, in that moment where I was like, ah, this is kind of like going downhill because everything I pick up about after Ship of Destiny, I'm just like, what is this? What is this literature? I'm confused. Uh, so I'm being a bit harsh with my judging because I'm on the Robin Hood high. But still, there is a shift in the character dynamic and that made it hard to keep reading. But it's just a bit and then it goes back and then the ending is fantastic. Okay, I'll finish reading. If a mix of Lupin and Ocean's Eleven set in a fantastical medieval fantastical medieval venice appeals to you if you like the honorable thieves trope and the sassy sarcastic super smart and he knows it um thief character trope if you have fun with guy friend cruise in fantasy um okay See, I need to talk and I need to talk. Firstly, the setting is fantastic, fabulous, scrumptious. Um, one of the things that I think Scott Lynch did brilliantly is that he set the book in a very recognizable place and then he just made it fantasy. Because sometimes fantasy authors, I feel like they break their, their, their brains with, oh, what I am, what am I going to name my country? Like the names of the places, and the, and sometimes they're just they're, they're like I'm going to choose a super weird name so it feels like it's fantasy, and that can take you a bit out of the story. And what Scott Lynch did was that he said, okay, Italy, Venice, 
and all of the names and everything sounds like an actual Italian city. So it feels real because everything that you are reading, the names are recognizable. And then he just adds the fantasy element. So I thought that was super clever because from the get-go, you accept it as real. Oh yeah, uh, if you don't like books that don't have female characters, I don't think this book is for you. Um, actually, I know this book is not for you because there are like two female characters in passing. Um, I myself grew up with The Lord of the Rings. So I guess that's where my love of the guy crew guy friend group comes from not to get too into Tolkien trivia which you know I love but you know to Tolkien uh, friend male friendships were very important because he was in World War One and in the World War when he was in, in the war um, his friends were very important so for him the the male friendship is very important and so I think that's reflected in the Lord of the Rings and if you love the Lord of the Rings you pick up on that and I love male male friendship crews but I am going on a tangent so if you like that if you like the guy crew if you like the too smart cocky arrogant thief um you will love this book if you don't like that you won't so yeah and uh, okay so if you like all that you are going to love the gentleman bastards there is also something that's just like just it hits my kind of thing the thief crew is called the gentleman bastards this this book is the first book in the gentleman bastard series and um, the gentlemen bastards are called that way because they're a thief crew. They only steal from nobility. And so they are super educated. And so they learn about art and culture and fashion and cuisine. I just find that... I just find that super fun. I love that trope. I love that. Um, and after the dynamic comes back, it, the, as I said, the ending, I was laughing out loud. This should be ad, ad, adapted. I mean, it is written, the structure of the book is very much as a TV show. If you read it, the paragraph breaks, you can see the editing in the show. Cut to another scene, cut to another scene. It's like that. And the, the Lord Glamour, he would be the best TV show character. There are fantasy books I love more, but I think this one is the one that needs to be adapted. Uh, and also, uh, the Gentleman Bastard series is an unfinished series. We don't know if it's ever going to be finished, but The Lies of Locke Lamora is a standalone book. So you can just read The Lies of Locke Lamora and not continue. So yeah. What am I currently reading? I am reading Fool's Errand, which is the first book in the Tony Man trilogy, which is the third trilogy in the realm of the Elderlings books. I'm also reading A Thousand Stitches by Olivia Atwater. I'm not going to talk a lot about that because Olivia Atwater is another favorite author. An author spotlight video where I talk about all of Olivia Atwater's book is an other plan I have. So I'm not going to talk about that book. Moving on, next book. What I'm also reading, oh, Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel, which is a literary fiction book which with speculative elements. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it when I finish it. And that's it because I'm tired and I'm hungry and I just want to stop talking now. So I hope you're having a good week etc 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 i will see you soonish in another bouquet video and in the meantime i wish you happy reading